So here I've got sort of a standard Windsor chair and I've picked one that has arms. Um, and as I said, you don't have to pick chair with arms. It doesn't matter, but in this case, I'm gonna show you how to measure a chair with arms. So the first uh, thing on our list is uh, the slope of the seat. And you determine the slope of the seat by measuring the height at the front and the height at the back. So I've got 17 inches at the front and I've got 16 and a half inches at the back. That's half an inch, so there's a half inch slope. Then I've got the width, and you'll notice that I've written in width at the front and width at the back. For your chair, those two dimensions might be the same or they might be different. So you can see with this chair, it, it's a little bit difficult um, uh, to um, sort of measure it very precisely, but that's okay, we're just gonna get as close as we can. So the width at the front, now we're always thinking about functional measurements, okay? So the width here is 19 and a half, but I have to fit in between these two um, spindles. So in fact, what's really critical for me to understand is the width between these two spindles, okay? So I'm gonna say that looks like it's 16 and a half at the front. And then at the back here, it's pretty close to the same. It's a little bit narrower, maybe about 50. Okay. All right. So from there to there at the front, and I'm kind of approximating from there to there. All right. Now, the next measurement I want to take is the functional depth. And again, we can see that the depth of this seat you know, if we look at the very back, the very front, that's 17 and a half inches. But we're never going to be able to sit back there. We're always going to be stopped by these spindles. So I want to measure from the front of the spindles to the front of the seat, and that's 16 inches. So now we're going to move on to the armrests, all right? And uh, I'm going to measure the height above the seat, and it's 8 inches. And it looks to be consistent. It might change. If the seat was very sloped, that might be a different measurement, and then you could indicate that it's different at the front uh, from the back. But in this case, with this chair, it's eight inches from the seat all the way along. The length, now you can see that there's a bit of a curve here, so it's really hard to tell exactly you know, where this starts becoming a functional armrest and where it starts becoming part of the backrest. So I'm just gonna approximate it. Okay? I'm going to say that this is nine and a half inches long. And then the width, well, of course it's narrower back here, but I'm going to use the part that my arm rests on. Okay, so when I sit on this chair, I've got a nice flat surface here, and this is about two and an eighth of an inch wide. Okay, now let's move to the back. Height from the floor to the top of the back, that's fairly straightforward. Okay, so I've got that at 37 and a half. Height from the top of the seat to the top of the back. Now we could calculate this from other measurements, but we're just gonna go ahead and measure it anyway. It'd be a little bit easier to refer to. And that's 21 inches. And I'm making most of my contact here. So the back is about 16 inches wide. Now, the angles and the curves. This is probably the most difficult aspect of a chair to measure. The angle between the seat and the back. Uh, you can use cardboard, foam pour, whatever you have around the house. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to put um, this piece against the backrest. A little bit tricky. Okay. This piece on the seat, and then I'm going to put a pencil mark here, all right? And that way if these fall apart, it doesn't matter. And then if you want to come over and photograph this on the table, my handy camera mat. See, I can put these back together again. And then I can just put my protractor on top. And 
this is telling me that it's 97 degrees. Now, is the backrest curved? All right. Well, we can see it is. And again, if you remember when I sat in the chair, I could tell that I was only making contact with the spindles. We can see that the curve is going like that. And we don't have a center spindle here, so we're going to assume maybe it's a little bit more than what we've got here, but it's about a three quarter inch deflection. Okay, somewhere in there. Is the seat curved? Well, we can see that it is. Uh, lots of chair seats aren't curved, but again, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to hold our straight edge and we're going to measure. And it looks to me like we've got a deflection of about three-eighths of an inch. Okay, and the very last category is, is there lumbar support? And we can see that there isn't. And most chairs really don't have a pronounced lumbar support. You'll find that in task chairs, but really not many other chairs uh, will have that. If your chair does have lumbar support for some reason, just um, you'll see where the bulge is. You can just measure up and determine where that lumbar support is. Uh, but if your chair does not have lumbar support, then just leave that away. So finally, what we want to do is we want to sit in the chair to determine whether it's comfortable, okay? And when you do this, you might want to close your eyes and you want to think of a few things. You want to think of how your feet meet the floor. You want to think of the pressure on your sit bones. You want to Think about where the chair makes contact with your back. Is it hitting your spine? Uh, is it digging into your shoulder blades? How comfortable are the armrests? Are your elbows up? Okay. Is it too low or is it too high? Does it move your shoulders up? Okay. And then just see if you can feel that slope to the seat. Does the seat feel like it's level? Does it feel like you're angled back slightly? Does it feel like you're in a comfortable position um, for whatever function the chair is, dining, lounging, uh, whatever that might be. Okay, 